record. Carrie, <laughs> um, we're, we're only seeing your thing. picture, not um, your face. Okay, I think we are in good shape. Okay, thank you. All thank right. You. I'm Christina Matthews, co-chair of the committee. I will call the meeting to order now. Um, as a preliminary matter, permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated um, on this call are present and can hear me. When I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. <clears throat> Cynthia Ganung. Uh, here. Jen Howard Schroeder. Here. Uh, Marlene Schultz. Here. Bud Schramm. Here. Ashok Here. Mehta. Here. Amelia Klein. Here. And Carrie Herwich. Here. And myself, Christina Matthews. And we have two members who are unable to make it, um, Jared Pizzuto and Julie Venables. And I would also like to uh, make note that we have Mo Handel from the select board. Uh, present on this call and also Sandy Sincata, um, support services manager from the town. Thank you both for, for joining us today. <clears throat> now I'll just um, read a, a little intro to the remote meeting protocol. This open meeting of the Needham Human Rights Committee is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. This, the order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. For this meeting, the Needham Human Rights Committee is convening by Zoom app as posted on the town's website. Um, we've also identified uh, how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other People may be able to see you and that take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Now we can turn to the first item on our agenda. The first item is um, discussion of the public statement that uh, the Human Rights Committee would like to make, to, would like to make regarding um, the killing of George Floyd and other such violence that we have seen. We have a draft um, of a letter that we've, uh, of a statement that we've begun and, and during the meeting we can take feedback and um, edit as needed. Has anyone, everyone had a chance to take a look at the, at the letter? Yes. Yes. Okay. Let me just pull it up. Thank you for drafting it, Christina. Yeah, thanks I, for giving it to me. I really like the tone of it. Um, okay, I'll, I, I'll just read it and then mm -hmm. we can, uh, we can discuss. Um, to our Needham community, we are broken hearted after witnessing the cruel police killing of George Floyd and this ongoing plague of police violence that has devalued black lives. George Floyd's cries for breath, for help, for his mama have forced all of us to think more about what we are called to do. So we quicken the day we live in a world where no one else has to endure the crushing pain of racism and hatred. To our black brothers and sisters, we stand with you and we grieve with you. You have endured the trauma and terror of this kind of violence for far too long. For those of us who are not black, we cannot fully understand your pain, but know that we are here with you. We will continue to try our best to be an ally. So many of us are feeling angry and helpless about these issues that feel so much bigger than us. Our hope lies in each of us who are willing to act for meaningful change and to see our role in impacting systemic racism. At the same time, we recognize that anti-racism work starts with honest self-reflection to identify those areas in our own belief systems and actions that result in inequity and indifference. This internal work includes an obligation to educate ourselves about how and when racism began in our country, including how its manifestations have morphed and adapted through the centuries. As your Human Rights Committee, our work aims to build bridges of understanding as we advocate for the human rights of all in our town. 
We hope that this groundswell of awareness will lead to meaningful action. Our community needs your presence and your voice. In the days to come, we will share resources for learning and action on our website and Facebook page. And uh, I just, I left some space there if we wanted to, you know, end with a quote or any, anything further that folks would like to add. In solidarity, the Needham Human Rights Committee. Does anyone have any, any thoughts on this? I thought it was great. It's really, yeah, it's, I think it's really well said and well written. I was wondering if we should um, have all of our names. Yeah, I, you know, I was thinking the same thing because we've actually never, and someone recently I, I had noticed on, on some posting asked, who are, the, who are these people? And I thought- <laughs> I think should, that's a really good point, Marlene. Yes, that we should include our names. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, we should say, you know, the names or the human rights committee and then list the names it needs to say you know who we yes. are yeah um, yes okay and i don't know that we need to end with a quote because i think okay. i think in my opinion um i think you know that the statement is powerful and stands on its own um okay and i think it's thank you so much this must have been quite a job to do after your kids went to bed last night <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I agree with, uh, with Marlene. I agree with Marlene regarding the quote. I mean, it's nice to have quotes, but I think- but that, I don't think we need it. The statement is so powerful. I don't think a quote is either needed or appropriate. Okay. I agree with Marlene too. And I want to remember at some point, we wanted to ask Mo about whether there's any expectation that the police department might write a statement separate from what the town is working on. Let's, should we finish with our statement first? And I, then feel it's, I feel it may be relevant. Okay. I think it's relevant because um, the first, I, this is wonderful. I, I really appreciate, uh, it's a very powerful statement and I think uh, it, we don't need a quote. I think it's to the point. The opening statement though, the, where we're identifying the police and I'm wondering um, if, if we also need a statement from the police department because uh, they are our partners um, as town uh, members of the community, and mm. I don't know. I I I I understand that that it was a police act, uh, and there are many reasons for why this happened. But um, I'm just wondering if there was a statement, and if if the police department would have an opportunity to state their point of view in addition to our uh, statement. I I think it can be separate, though. I don't think it has to be together. At no, no, I don't think it should be together. But I think just alone, um, I think well, the, the, the police department statement should also. Right. And Christina also forwarded us a statement that the select board um, has written that does talk about the police. But I would like to know if there, from Mo, if there is a separate statement coming from the police that you know of. My understanding is that there will be. Uh, Chief Schlittler will be at our meeting tomorrow. I know from previous conversations with him, he feels very deeply about this issue. So um, my understanding is that there will be a statement, but I haven't seen it. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if we need to make clearer in the first paragraph about the police killing. Most people know that that was in another state, but just oh, whether we need to mention that in terms of that, that's, we're not saying all of police work is, is violent. Right. Kind of. But that, that being said, uh, you know, it's not just one police, you know, it's not just one that took place. I mean, we should, you know, are you saying, uh, Cynthia, uh, in another state, in, in other states, or in particular, this just just this one killing. When we say witnessing the cruel police killing of George Floyd in yeah. what or, um, Minneapolis or or what in this ongoing plague of police violence, so we're not saying that it was only in, but that particular one. I'm sure people know, but. Um, I think we need to acknowledge that it happened in a particular place and that mm -hmm. it is part of a, a broader 
kind of, um, you know, national concern. Well, I think I think that everyone knows that it was, you know, in a, in another state. But uh, I think the question is, uh, you know, I'm not aware of everything that's gone on in Massachusetts uh, outside of Needham. Uh, I think we, you know, I, I think the way it's stated is fine. No, my, if it's easy, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, if you want to say the um, killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota, in this ongoing plague of police violence. Right. Do, yeah, because, I mean, we're using country. this, but there, there's been, this is not the only one. This yeah. is, a, right. as you said, in this ongoing, yeah. Right. I like that you said that. Okay, so I can add that in. Hey, Christina. Um, this is Ashok. I really like the tone of the letter. There's just one comment I have, and it's more regarding the second paragraph <laughs> to mm -hmm. our Black brothers and sisters. And I think somebody already mentioned that it should go beyond just uh, Black brothers and sisters. Any marginalized or any brutalized uh, group of people, we are with them. So yeah, but I, I, isn't and this particular come across that way? It just comes across that we are with only with black brothers and sisters. Yes, yeah, subsequently you do talk about you know uh, racial tones and so on. Carrie, were you about to say something? I, I just felt like I feel like this is very much part of the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, so I, I kind of liked that you pointed that out personally. Yeah, I agree. You I can keep like that, but you can add something more also saying, you know, we are with anybody who has been brutalized by police. Maybe that could be in the next paragraph, which is a more a right. broader statement. Okay, do you, how, how would you I, like- I just to don't want to put anything in there. Do you know, I, I um, personally feel like it, in that space that there, being black in America is a very particular kind of experience here. And I, um, I, I kind of don't want to dilute that sentiment. Um, and I think it's-, it's like, I, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's like the people, fine, saying, it's like the people saying all lives matter kind of thing. Like, I don't want yeah. it to sound like that at all. I actually think that, that you captured it when you said, as your human rights committee, our work um, aims to build bridges of understanding as we advocate for the human rights of all in our town, which encompasses everybody. Ashok, does that not say it for you? It does, but I thought, the tone is just for, as somebody pointed out, for Black Life Matters group. Mm -hmm. And I thought it might be nicer to, you know, acknowledge that, but make it a little more broader, upfront rather than at the end. So I do agree that you have pointed out at the back. And you do talk about racial issues, but I thought if we can also talk about, you know, it's not only black people, Hispanics are being treated the same way by police or any other marginalized group, you know. Native Americans. Know Native Americans and so on. No. Could something be, the first, that paragraph, our black brothers and sisters, I think should not be changed. I think that's really Yeah, great. you can keep that, but keep- But maybe add, add something, something in the next paragraph. like one word somewhere. Mm -hmm. You have a suggestion? To see where that could come. How about in that second sentence of the third paragraph where it says, our hope lies in each of us who are willing to act for meaningful change and to see our role in impacting systemic racism, adding something um, like which we know impacts People of all color, people of all color, or all you know, all color races, and so on. That would be yeah. another that place. Be place. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Not, it's not That's a good suggestion. Well, if we're being inclusive, it's not just people of all colors. Right. No, you can make it broader. I mean, it's gender, it's religion, it's you know all right. the protected classes. Right, but this, but this particular statement is about 
right. the the eruption after George Floyd's murder. Right. So I, I t we we are for all of that, but I feel like we shouldn't. This isn't a, this isn't a letter about the Human Rights Committee and what we cover. This is about this incident and how it has, you know, put a spotlight on on this issue, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. We don't want to we don't want to dilute uh, what we're reacting to because I think it's uh, right. then then we will be you know again maybe pictured as okay here they go again talking about everyone and we're really dealing in particular with what recently happened and I think with our ongoing work we're you know dealing with with everyone who is you know not treated properly. I agree. I, I, I think um, we're responding to a particular act of violence that has triggered um, a lot of. Shook, how do you feel about that? So to just a thought, I'm fine because I do like the tone and the way she drafted. It was just one suggestion, but I'm fine with it. I do. I do understand where you're coming from too. You know, I mean, all of these kinds of incidents make me think about kind of you know, our own personal experience with it, you know? So I, I remember after 9-11, all the issues my my father, a big bearded Indian man had, um, even with, with police. So that we all have some of our personal um, stories with this, but I do think the, yeah, I do think that the black experience here is very different from any of ours. Um, hmm. But yeah, and if you, we can, we can move on and Ashok or anyone else, if you have, um, yeah, if you have anything you'd like to add, we, we can definitely continue to revisit well, that. I was going to make a motion that we accept the statement that, um, that was presented with the edits, the, the mm -hmm. current edits. Um, so I, I, I'd like to move that we do that. I don't know if there's anyone you, who- You need to state your name, Marlene. Oh, Marlene Schultz, I move that we, do I need to repeat the whole thing? I move that we accept the um, statement as uh, drafted um, with the edits as discussed with adding our names and a, a, a few different words um, to be submitted. I don't know where we didn't say. Judge so Ram, I second that motion. So Christina, do you wanna ask for discussion, more discussion or you want to, you ready to call the vote? I think I can, I, I, I feel comfortable to call the vote. Um, Ashok, does that sound okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. We shouldn't delay it, thanks. Thank you. Okay, so why don't I, 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 um, I will call each member's name and you can, uh, you can um, respond in the affirmative. Cynthia Ganung? Yes. Jen Howard Schroeder? Yes. Marlene Schultz? Yes. Bud Schramm? Yes. Ashok Mehta? Yes. Amelia Klein? Yes. Carrie Hurwich? Yes. And Christina Matthews? Yes. Thank you. Um, now, the second item that goes along with this is that, you know, one of the things that we would like to offer to folks is, you know, everyone gathered in town um, a couple of days ago and, you know, what's next? And so we would like to offer some sort of a resource um, list, you know, as a, as a next step, something that we could share with the community, perhaps on our, our website and on Facebook of um, places for further learning, you know, including books, maybe other, you know, community programs that we could, we could consider. Some of the current things we're also doing, I would, I would actually like to, to share some of what we've been doing because I don't think the community is too aware of our work, you know, our partnership with the schools. Um, the diversity and discussion book club, you know, there are lots of spaces where some of some of this uh, work has begun and we could share some of that also. Um, and I had, I had asked if anyone had suggestions of, of resources to please let let me know. I kind of have a list started. Um, if anyone, you know, right now has any any other suggestions. I know at the beginning of this conversation, uh, Bud had had mentioned this book when getting along is not enough. Do you think that would be uh, one to add to this yes. list? Okay, by Maureen Walker. Uh, uh, Mo, had Mo, you had suggested were some book some books that you mentioned in the beginning um, that we might add to this list. 
these truths, I think, is uh, it's comprehensive. It's a slog, but she starts at the very beginning and she takes it up till last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of what's in that book puts what's happening now in perspective. And some of it is just as horrific in the days gone by, but the current situation is the most dangerous, I think, in a, in a long, long time. And it's very clear. It's a very well-written book. That's the Jill Lepore, right? Jill Lepore. Jill Lepore is the author, Christina. She writes for the New Yorker. Uh, yeah. She actually lives in Brookline, teaches at Harvard. Oh. Okay. She's an historian. Hmm. An excellent book. Hmm. Uh, Christina, uh, I know Amelia is aware that the Needham Diversity Initiative has been putting together a list of resources and Amelia contributed a lot of things to that list. Okay, so great. I don't know whether there's a way of somehow connecting with them around that. Yes, I, I wanted to mention that it's posted. Uh, they did an excellent job. Okay. And I'm wondering if we are going to replicate what they are doing. Uh, there is a section on how to speak to children uh, about racism during, the, uh, during these times. Um, but I wonder if we might, I love the idea of, of having um, a segment where we talk about what the Human Rights Committee the, has done and, and what their goals are, our mission. But I'm wondering if we might want to make it a little bit different than what the Needham Diversity Initiative has on their website, maybe focus more on adult books. We might look at their website and make ours a little bit different. Um, Amelia, did you say you put that list together? I put the list together for children. Okay. The list of, of uh, I mean, I have it. I could I'd gladly share it. But I'm just wondering, uh, is it okay? Do we want to replicate, um, have something similar um, to what the Needham Diversity Initiative has oh. on their website? Or is truly a different? Yeah. I mean, I think we could definitely link people to that um, to that resource. Christina seems to have a question or a statement. She made, she waved her arm. Did you want to say something? No, we were waving to Julie. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> I was actually listening for a while and my oh. computer wasn't working, but I'm here fully now. <laughs> I, I see an issue with using the books that they have, plus adding the additional ones that we've come up with. Uh, I don't think uh, uh, someone's list is something that's just their list. And if we feel it's an appropriate list, we should be uh, replicating mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are, every organization is putting out lists right now, and some of them are so exhaustive. I yes. got one today. It's actually overwhelming. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I think you might have mentioned this, Christina, in your email. It would be good just to focus on a few resources and mm -hmm. not say that this is all, but just a few, um, because I just, I find it like, where do I start? It's just, I don't yeah. know if other people feel that way. It feels overwhelming to me. Yeah. I like the world of Wellesley, the idea of we're going to give you one thing each day and the follow up to the vigil. And the first day they said, post your sign in your window. The second day they said, get a Black Lives Matters um, lawn sign for your lawn and that there's kind of one focus. So, so they're doing, they're listing action steps, daily action steps. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is. But that's an example that can be overwhelming. What do you do? And yeah. it's overwhelming with the resources too. I agree with I agree with, I agree with the action steps, which are important. But I also think we need to provide our community with some resources as far as some uh, some books to read too, uh, because uh, we're kind of there's a difference between action steps and you know picking up a book and reading it. Yeah, I, I like the idea good. of people coming together. Um, Bud, that you mentioned, um, one of the first books that you mentioned, maybe focusing on how the community can come together. I was also thinking we might want to add a couple of videos. And somebody sent me a couple of videos this morning that I have not had time to um, preview. Um, and uh, I'll take a look at those. And if I think they're appropriate, I can send them on to you, um, mm -hmm. Christina. There's also a, an excellent, um, I think it's like four or five week online um, basic, basic course in kind of learning more about the origins of racism and how it's, 
um, how it's shown up in our, in our society. I'm trying to find the name of it. Um, and I can, I'll send it to you. Um, okay. Thank you. Christina Mo has his hand raised. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sorry. I'm trying to write minutes while, while we do this. Oh, okay. That's what I, was doing. I have another book suggestion, which yeah. is The Fire Next Time by uh, James Baldwin. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's a good one. That's when I realized I knew nothing <laughs> about this issue. Mm -hmm. However much I thought I might know about this issue, I realized I knew nothing. Yeah. Okay. And then I have your seen, list of did, videos. Did you send us the list? No, I haven't sent anything yet. Oh, okay. But I have started okay. something, so I will add these to it and I can send it. And I think you're right that we shouldn't, um, it, it shouldn't be too exhaustive or people okay. will be overwhelmed. And we can edit it and change it as we move move along. But yeah, a, a first place to begin. Um, are, we, are we able to recommend organizations if people are looking to donate? Or is that something that's outside of sort of the scope of what we should be doing? Hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure. Mo, Mo, do you know anything about the, I don't know, the protocol behind that? Yeah, that's what I, was I don't I know. Mean, I, I mean, part of me says you should be able to do that. Part of me says that's a slippery slope, but right. I, I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. I can certainly talk to um, others in town government about the implications of that. Mm. Um, I don't know. I mean, again, my sentiment is yeah, you should, but I don't know if you can. Yeah. Um, I mean, we could even, yeah. What were you going to say, Cynthia? Hey, this is, um, I don't know uh, where this would come in the agenda, but it's sort of connected with books and resources. Uh, we were starting to look at the um, book discussion for June 17th on Educated to mm -hmm. look at, is there a way to look at some of the issues in that too that are would be relevant to um, some parts of the emergency or crisis we're in now? Or is this a point where we should think about a different book? Um, I just, I don't know where that would come in the discussion, but I think that since people were together, that started as an email question that this might be the right place to go further with that. Jen, do you want to update everyone on where that is um, yeah we can't i guess we can't change the book um yeah. <laughs> the library didn't feel like um that they would be able to get copies of the enough copies of the book to have it um have it be available for the uh community and um that there was some some committee i i i'm not sure if it was within the library or not that had to approve that we were going to change it so they were not um interested in doing that right now. So it would be looking the, I haven't read it, I've just looked at things online, including an, an interview with the author. And I think there are issues around the, um, the various polarizations of groups within our society that come up within the book in terms of uh, the woman's experience growing up, what her family was like and what her experience is when she goes out beyond that that's that's the main thing that struck me but people who've read it might have another idea about which aspects could be emphasized to tie it to the current situations so it's still on the 17th is that correct yes yeah mo did you have something to add i think you're muted you're muted mo sorry um I'm thinking about the, the the question about donations to organizations. If what generally applies to other boards and committees in government, we tend not to solicit for private organizations and contributions because it is a slippery slope for us. I think that would likely be the case for a town. Would it be soliciting? Community, but, uh, uh, again, I, I, I'll certainly raise the question, uh, try to get you a more definitive answer. Yeah, I mean, I think it would, I think we could also just, you know, uh, list organizations that are supporting this work. Without necessarily. Yeah, I saying, think yeah. you can do that. Without mentioning yeah. a donation, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that's, that's perfectly appropriate. Yeah. 
Hey, Christina, I'm happy to help. I mean, I've, uh, we've all seen tons of lists, but I'm happy to help put something together for that Great. aspect of it if you want. Great. Amelia, I, I'd, love, I'd love to run it all by you, too. Mm -hmm. Sure. Great. Um, hey, Christina, what about having some kind of a discussion group on Zoom, inviting people like chief of police, uh, superintendent of schools, Nicole, you know, some of the names who have come to our meetings in the past who are really interested in this and having that. So have local people, but talk about this. Yes, Jen, would you like to <laughs> respond? <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, I, th I think we should do that too. Um, I don't know exactly what it would look like, but the schools um, were open to trying to plan something with us uh, for the community. And I'm not sure what their timeline is because um, the school year ends June 19th. Um, so I'm, we're supposed to be meeting with Mary Lammy, uh, I think Friday. Um, to try to plan something. So if, if you're interested in helping to plan or if anybody is interested in helping to plan, please let me know because I'm sure um, if we are gonna be doing something that quickly that um, all hands on deck would be great. Um, I don't know, Mo, you, you had mentioned that um, the chief might be making any kind of statement. Do you have any sense as to whether he would be open to talking at some kind of community forum? in that in that way i honestly have never asked him that question again i know how strongly he feels about this issue i think that's a question that you could ask mm -hmm. but i don't know what the answer would be from him obviously he would have to feel comfortable himself personally so i don't know what his answer would be is that Melinda may be able to give you a better read on that. And I, I think that that request, as opposed to coming from the select board, coming from the human rights group, might be a good place for the question. What do you think, Mo? Well, I think he reports directly to Kate, who's the town manager. Mm -hmm. So I think any request should go through her office. Okay. Um, but what I'm saying is the request from our group as opposed to the select board going through her office, the appropriate channel. What are your thoughts? I think that's appropriate. Yeah. Okay. I agree. I mean, you have our, you, you're making the request. I don't think you need an extra level of screening. Kate is perfectly capable of dealing with that question and making a judgment about his availability and all of the other things she's dealing with. So sure. I agree with that. Remember, John was on our committee for many years, mm -hmm. the liaison, before he became chief. No. There is some precedent, too, because do you remember a couple of years ago, um, we did a, um, uh, like a community discussion up at the Center yeah. for the Heights on, on immigration enforcement, and he did come and, t and speak. Yeah. Uh, that's the one that Denise organized that, I think, didn't she? Well, the Human Rights Committee was the main one, but Denise supported it. And that was with uh, Jim Jamil Adams. No, this is this is a little bit different. This was oh, a um, different one. This was we were up at the center, um, center. Yeah. in oh, the library. library. Yeah. I think Denise spoke. I think Marianne Cooley spoke and I think the chief spoke. Yeah, yeah. So you could follow up with some of the same people, school department representative, um, some police chief, Denise Garlic, some other people. We did, um, we did um, reach out to the chief of, um, several days ago. Saturday. Okay, sa Saturday to find out if, if there was um, any movement on making a statement and such, and we, we hadn't heard back yet. Um, you might so want to involve the school committee at, when in, in the discussion with the schools. Mm -hmm. oh. I, I think Mary Lammy set that up, so uh, we can suggest that to her. And right, I think that they I, were uh, working on it from the, sorry, but. Denise has been very supportive, but I think I really would like to see this, just the town. Yeah. You know, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. I agree. Yeah, I agree with you. 
But this was a different thing. We were just talking about that John was, in, was involved. Right, because I think it was, a, it was state legislation that was part of the discussion. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, although she did reach out, reach out to me on Sunday to see what, what we were doing in response and, and you know, said she would be happy to support whatever we were trying to do. Okay. Which I think is appropriate, but I think that what we're talking about now really, I think, what, I think that's certainly appropriate, but what we're talking about now I think is really should be focused on the town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it would be good to have some sort of a community forum. I think this Thursday within this meeting with, um, is it Thursday, Friday, is it Thursday? I don't know. Friday? I think it's, it's Thursday at one. Um, and I would love to just because I, if this is, I can just see where things are moving. Um, and I am having limited bandwidth to kind of be this involved in, um, all of, all of the things that are coming out as, as a result of these events. And, um, I wonder if there's someone else that would be interested, anyone else in the group to, to um, plan something like this with the schools or community or whatever this, this comes out to be. Um, we'd love to have some additional. Yeah. I would, I'd be happy to work with someone else on this if, because uh, I obviously being still fairly new to town, I'd like some help in coordinating mm -hmm. who we would be communicating with and how we would do that. But are you available this Thursday at one? Uh, let me quickly look. I think so. Let me check. Uh, I know we're not supposed to volunteer people, but I'm looking right at Carrie, who's had so much experience uh, working. I, I, you know, I literally was just looking at my calendar. Thursday, um, the school I work at, it's their eighth grade graduation, and I'm running the Zoom webinar, and I, it's <laughs> right. like, I can't at that hour. It's but I would, I just can't make the Thursday meeting, but I would be happy to be involved. Um, Great. I, I, am, I am available Thursday at one. I actually had a uh, annual physical that I've rescheduled. Okay. <laughs> so that's off my calendar. Okay. Hey, that's wonderful. I think that that will be a big help to have, um, have Bud and Carrie um, help, help out with this. And now we just have a we just have about seven minutes left, and so the, the final thing I would like for us to to talk about is um, leadership for the coming year. If in this group, you know, we still even after um, the student Sophia joins, and um, and I I won't be able to participate next year, um, we will still have an, a couple of open positions to fill. Um, and I think as we we're seeing our, our, we continue to have so much work to do and there's a need for it um, and a desire for it from the community. So um, it, if there is anyone in the group who feels as though they would like to um, co-chair or chair the committee, now's the time to let us know. <laughs> I just, I can't commit to anything right now. I really can't. I have to see what happens with my, my job, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. And I, and I also have to say, I, I've said this before, I, I feel very restricted and frustrated with our, our inability to respond as quickly as we like. And I struggle with that. Um, it, it's very frustrating to me. I, you know, I, I've said before, part of me sometimes thinks we should break off and be our own group that isn't under the umbrella of the town. Um, but I also see there's amazing benefits to being under the umbrella of the town. So it's just, it's something I struggle with, to be very honest with you all. I, I, second, I second Carrie's thoughts. And Mo, Mo, are you here? Uh, did, did you hear what Carrie said about the struggles of being, uh, you know, kind of on an island in the town's responsiveness. You are obviously right. responsive. We feel right. you are, uh, you know, you're listening to what we say, but uh, at times it has been very, very frustrating. I understand the frustration. And I think in many ways you would be uh, more free to do a lot of the things you want to do if you weren't totally under the town's umbrella. Um, I think we, we had that conversation last year. Um, mm -hmm. I think the human rights are very important to the town, but the constraints on the town are different from the constraints that are on independent groups, even if they're getting a lot of town support. And the best example 
is New Year's Needham, which we spun off because we felt they could be more productive if they were independent. There's still an ongoing and very tight working relationship with them. So it's something you might want to consider. Uh, I, just one person's opinion. Didn't yeah, we bring I think up it's, it's the idea for of being like becoming a commission? This is something Marlene's had experience with from another uh, town or city that instead of a committee that you have more independence as a commission within the town. Mm -hmm. I think situations yeah. like that, if you give us examples and consider us a partner in trying to figure out what the best way to deliver response to situations uh, and taking position, public positions, that there, there may be a better way to do it than we currently do it. And you'll find us open from the select board side. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's worth visiting for sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm, if someone would like to work with me on that, it's very, um, there's lots of information out there because most communities have commissions and have much more ability to act without having to go through the select board or the town manager um, so that you can, because human rights issues are usually time sensitive when you need to respond. Um, so if someone would like to work with me on that, I'd be happy to do that and then we could present it to the select board, but then I, doesn't it have to go to town meeting also? I'm not so sure. I don't know. We'd have to look at what Could the you find the out pathway is. For us? Yes, we can well, certainly well, explore that. Well, when you broke off the New Year's Needham, did that have to go through all that? No, but I don't think the New Year's Need. This is, a, is this part of a state mandate? Mm -mm. No, it's just, we, I mean, we have legal representation. If the desire is to do that and there's a consensus to do it on all sides, we'll find a path. Okay. Uh, I think we, Christine, I think we have uh, about uh, a minute left. Uh, yes, I think we have to close. Yeah. Can, can we make a uh, decision though about uh, supporting this idea of as a group that we agree that we want to look into that? Do we need to make that as a formal decision? I don't no, think... I think I don't, I don't know. Think we need a motion. I don't think oh. we need a motion, Marlene. I'd be uh, yeah. happy to work with you. On I'm this. asking the chairs okay. what they think. I'm not sure I have an answer to that right now. I think that it makes sense to look into it and then maybe um, at the last meeting of the year uh, that we could try to figure out where to go with that. Um, while we have Mo on the, on the call here, as we're running out of time, there was just a couple of things I wanted to ask. Uh, while we while we still have them here, and um, one is Mo, whether or not this, um, aside from the statement, the select board is intending to do anything um, further in response to what's um, what's happened. And the second question is 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 it possible to get the um, we had been planning that great all day training um, along yes. with state um, and obviously we had to put it off because of COVID, but there's been some talk about trying to do it uh, in some kind of virtual fashion. And I'm wondering if it's possible to get that kind of back on the front burner. Um, I'm sure it's possible to get it in the mix. I think the situation is, and it's hard to appreciate this, our town staff is running very thin. Mm -hmm. And many of the people involved in all of the things we're all doing are beyond their ability to do everything they're supposed to do. So that's on the list. Where it will fall in terms of priorities, hard to say. We're still trying to figure out what our range of ability to provide services. We're moving to by appointment only a town hall now. So we're starting to create more public access and I don't know what the demand on the town staff will be on that. I mean, you can see Sandy's working from home and. I know every time I call her, she's working hard. So, and that's true for everybody. Kate is out straight. There are lots of things we're dealing with right now, not the least of which is town meeting. So <laughs> we, we don't want to let that fall by the wayside. I think we all have got consensus that it's a great thing to do. And you have the support you, 
you, you should have, but we need to get that in the mix. And if we can do it sooner rather than later, great. And especially given the current circumstance, yeah. it becomes even more important. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Great. And, and so then I have one last question, unless Jen, you had another one of Mo. Um, so we seem to be at a standstill because there's no one who is able to step up and lead the group, um, either based on their time or the, or the configuration of the way the group is at this time. And right. I don't know what <laughs> suggestion you might have for us, if any, at this point. Well, you have two vacancies, so the two <laughs> routes are trying to identify among yourselves who has the, the time and energy and focus to do that or to try to recruit somebody in the near term, but that would require who's ever serving that role now to continue until you can find somebody. Um, to the extent that anybody knows people in the community who would be good additions to this, you should let Sandy know because she arranges the interviews with the vice chair. And it would be good to find somebody who can come into leadership. I mean, I, I totally appreciate what you're saying. Um, and I, honestly, to all of you, I, I don't want to turn around and sound like I'm abandoning the crowd. Um, but I, I know I do not have the bandwidth to stick with this until we find somebody because I think that's going to be a very long time um, to try to find somebody that's willing to step in and, and actually have the, t the time to commit to, to leading the group right now. Mm -hmm. And I, this this happened last year too. <laughs> well, what's the time frame for your need? Is it immediate? Yes, sounds like it, right? After there, June, right? And I mean, then I, mean, I would ask the question of all of you: Is there anybody who could step in then until a permanent person could be identified? I mean, we'll work with you in trying to get somebody appointed, but you, you need to have somebody who's chairing your efforts. Maybe Mo, perhaps when when you guys meet, and again realizing I, I acknowledge how many other things you have going on, but no, if there are folks on the select board that maybe um, can think in part too how to how to fill their committee, um, particularly with somebody who can lead it. If I agree with you, and we should help you on that, and I personally will try to think of people who could possibly fill in. Um, I think that's how we got butt on. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, no, it's an obligation we have, and this is important. I mean, if nothing else from the last few days, we can see how important this is. Mm -hmm. There's so much more going on that we all know about. So, yeah, we've got to keep this function going. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering whether, I know, um, I think it was two years ago or so, that Marlene, as a former chair, can, uh, co-chaired with Jen when you when you started out mm -hmm. whether if somebody who was newer could have a, an assistant or co-chair with with someone like Marlene or Amelia not that asking not to pick on the two of you but the idea of not of making a three-year commitment or something but a beginning commitment because it's a lot to ask of somebody who's new to a committee to take that kind of leadership It, it may be worth us us um, trying to to see if we can get a, a date later in June to have um, our regular meeting to have more of a, a discussion because I think you know we're five minutes past our end time now um, and it, this seems like an important decision to make yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. in a longer time period. Good. Are you saying Good. we'll have another meeting? I'm saying we can ask for it, Amelia. Um, I, I think that uh, the availability of it is is not necessarily in our control. Um, and Sandy, do you know the answer to whether or not there's enough bandwidth for them to have another meeting in June? There should be, shouldn't there? Sandy? Sandy? Sandy must be frozen. Yeah. It's like she's frozen. Happen Sandy, you're time. frozen. Unfreeze. <laughs> A bad internet connection. Can you hear us? We'll certainly get back to you. If you let us know dates that you want, we'll try to find a way 
I can't speak for the town staff because I don't know how what their workload is. Mm -hmm. But there must be a way to be able to schedule a meeting. Yeah, and I think with some of with this on, ongoing kind of collaborative work with the schools and um, potentially other groups that we, we probably will need another one. Absolutely. Um, I would also like to say that I think what will make it work for the chairs and everybody is if everyone on the committee get involved um, in some of the ongoing projects in a, in, a, in a deeper way. I think that is, if we take a little piece of it, uh, and support the co-chairs or co-chair, even if it's on a temporary situation. I think that will help too. Uh, I think it's difficult when just a few people are doing all the major uh, ongoing projects uh, and then they burn out or they, uh, and then it falls in the lap of the chair or co-chairs. Uh, so I think if we continue to all take a little piece and, and continue to support. For example, um, some projects uh, don't require a lot of um, uh, real-time uh, effort. The annual report is something that you have to work on. That is something someone could do um, at home um, every week, uh, add something. It's a very tedious uh, project to do, but it also highlights the work of the Human Rights Committee and I think it's an important project. So that's just one little example where someone who might not be able to go to meetings because of their work or their family obligations, that they could do other things to support um, some of the, the, the activities that we're involved in. Sandy, just let me know that if you contact her after town meeting, which is June 8th or the 10th or 11th, depending on the <laughs> weather, she'll be able to get a meeting set up for you. I think we're going to have difficulty recruiting new people without having leadership. And I know our very best recruiter is Cynthia. She's, <laughs> she's the very best at finding um, really great people who are willing to put in the time and um, who represent um, different, different groups. But um, so that's just a, something to put on the table. And as a, as a parting shot, I, uh, I know Christina, unless you're into something 100%, you don't want to be involved. But I would like to personally and Jen also, uh, you know, as opposed to going off the committee, just your presence at meetings and your input, I feel has been so significant that for each of you to go off the committee completely, uh, taking, you know, with the assurance from the committee that you're not going to be dragged into doing something above and beyond your bandwidth, I think just your experience and your input. Uh, would be extremely important to the committee. Just consider it. I'm not looking for an answer today. Thank, thanks, oh. Bud. I know, I think part of the challenge has been that um, pandemic times have completely turned everything upside down. And mm -hmm. I sometimes feel like I just ha don't have a minute to, uh, I've got one kid sitting on the toilet waiting for me to go up there. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, this is what life is like with little children. <laughs> so, um, yeah. but yeah, it, I think it's just, it's made it tough. Yeah, and, um, and also with some of the Board of Health work, you know, there's a new, I, I, I thought I was going to step away from this committee. And then Dan asked me to join the school reopening committee to consider all of that. So there are other meetings from that group. And so it just feels like, um, a little bit unsustainable for, for me <laughs> to do this. You, honestly, I just wrote a text before this to Jen saying, I love this work so much. It, it means so much to me. Um, but I feel like for the short term, I can't, I can't manage it all. Wait till you see the cover of the latest New Yorker, Christine. <laughs> Trust me, you will love it. <laughs> oh, uh, did we decide about distribution of the statement? I know we I talked if we approved it. Meeting in June, um, before the yeah, town meeting. So, can you I can't hear. Hello? Hello? Cindy? Oh. I think we. Oh. Is the timing over the meeting? I'm not sure. No. Sandy? I, Sandy, you I there? Thought, I thought we needed to decide how we're distributing it. I can't. 
Yeah, Lisa. I know we, we said we said Facebook and website. Did we, was there? Are you going in the paper as well? Yeah, we could do our usual. Uh, yeah. That means today to get it to them. <laughs> it sounds really important. <laughs> it sounds like she's underwater. I need to jump on another meeting. I know. I have to. I, I do too. Actually, I have to phone. run. Okay. Thank okay. you all. Thank, thank you. you. Well, well, thank, you. Well, thank you very well, much. We, we need to call for adjournment, yes. right? Yes. I move that we adjourn. Thank you. Everybody. <laughs> no, you have to take a roll call. Favor, adjourn. Okay. Okay. Let me, let me um, take, take roll call. <laughs> Cynthia Ganem? Yes. Jen Howard Schroeder? Yes. Marlene Schultz? Yes. Bud Schramm? Yes, and thank you, Mo and Sandy, for uh, making this happen. Oh, thanks for letting us join you. Joke, it looks like he's gone. Amelia Klein. Uh, Amelia Klein? Yes. Carrie Hurwich? Yes. And Christina Matthews? Yes. You forgot Julie. Oh, Julie Venable, sorry. That's okay. I wasn't here at the beginning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Be safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.